Shannon was a big mommy's girl and I mean literally she followed me to the bathroom she followed me everywhere When I answered the phone, his voice sounded really weird. He said, I'm in, North Carol I'm in North Carolina. And he said, no, you don't understand. I've moved to North Carolina with my parents and you'll never see your daughter again. We met at um, at the mall where we worked. I mean, we were in a relationship and we were living together and we were engaged. I guess the more and more, the longer we were together, the more comfortable he became. He was verbally abusive. I cried every day she was gone. Time had passed, I was even more frantic and more crazy. Banged on the door, shout, I shouted a name, and this time I heard her on the inside yell for me. After that, um, September 11th happened. And they were very honest with me in the nicest way they could, but they bluntly said, you know, America's under attack. The FBI has a lot more on their plate now than one little missing girl. I didn't care if they blew up the whole United States. I wanted them to find my daughter. My name is Angela Michelle Johnson. One of the hardest things I've ever had to do was to tell my boyfriend at the time that I was HIV positive. And to my surprise, it did not change his view of me at all. I've been married to this wonderful man for 12 years now. I've never been ashamed of the disease. I did not speak about it because my family members were embarrassed, but I've actually lived with it for 13 years. But now, God is asking me to tell my story. We got the whole coastline destroyed. I'm out here starving. under hurricane warning Hungry. for a dangerous Hurricane Katrina. This is the storm that everybody has feared for New Orleans for many, many years. The police are buying up every drop of gas that is out there. They're, they're mobbing the stores and they won't let no one get no gas. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child alone ways from home. What happened? But the head just split in half. Alone Your house split in half? I don't have a hand. They do. They, you know, we came up in the roof, all the way to the roof, and the wall came and had just just open up, divided. Who was at your house with you? My wife. And where is she now? Can't find her body. She gone. You can't find your wife? She told me, bro. She told me I tried. I, I, I hold her hand tight like I could. And she told me, you can't hold me. She said, take care of the kids. Where are you guys going? We ain't got nowhere to go. I don't know where I'm going. I'm, I'm lost. That's all I had. That's all I had.
Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. This is amazing. This is America. It straddles the Appalachie River, a bridge connecting Walton to Oconee County, a concrete home to racial ignorance still living. It's also a bridge to the past, to murder at Moore's Ford Bridge. July 25, 1946, two black couples are shot to death by a white mob, but even the grieving parents can only whisper about what happened, about who did it. Don Culberth was 23 and playing ball when he heard the news. A fella came by telling us about uh, four people being lynched. Lynching was the word around town for more than a week before. 24-year-old Roger Malcolm was thrown in jail for stabbing a white landowner's son during an argument. His estranged wife, Maddie Campbell, stood outside. He hauled out the window to me, told me they were going to kill him. So Malcolm's current wife and two friends turned to Loy Harrison, another landowner they worked for. With a three in tow, Harrison agrees to bail Malcolm out. But Chris Culbert's dad saw a man buying rope that morning. You know, this has always been something, you know, has been burning my, you know, my memory since, uh, since I was a small child. Harrison and the Ford drive right by the Culbert's place, the long way to Harrison's home. And at Moore's Ford, waits an angry mob of 20. Roger Malcolm, Dorothy Malcolm, George Dorsey, and May Mary Dorsey, all murdered. Days later, Harrison showed the local sheriff how the mob pushed him aside and tied the hands of the victims. I tried to find an answer, but nobody wouldn't tell me now. Word of the funeral was it could happen again if people talked, and no one did. President Truman even called in the FBI. George Dorsey was a war hero, but no charges came, only silence.